Okay, thanks everyone for joining me today. Um, like I said, if you have questions, please type them in the questions box. We'll have a discussion about them. And then um, next steps after this presentation, I will send a follow-up email with uh, the recording and any additional resources that we talk about today. So who am I? I'm Amy Gibson. I am the fundraising officer here at QSO International. I've been here for three years and um, I love my job. I love working with people who are interested in international development and making a difference in the world. Um, it really is uh, important to me to, to do something and to give back and, and I feel really good about my job. So I'm here to help you. My role is to help coordinate this event and um, to help you be successful in your fundraising as well. So um, anything related to your fundraising or even the trip, um, I'm happy to field any questions that you might have on that. Um, ask me anything, I've heard it all. I've um, All of our volunteers who go on placements um, have a fundraising requirement. My role is really to help them and support them in their fundraising. So I work with people all the time who are doing the exact same thing you're doing is fundraising for an organization. So um, please feel free to ask and um, we can have a dialogue about it. I can, like it says there on the screen, I can help you create a campaign that plays to your strengths. So we can have a look at who your network is and um, what you might be able to accomplish between now and um, and let's say January. And uh, and I have no doubt that everyone's going to be really successful in their fundraising. That is a photo, a really goofy photo of me at Machu Picchu in 2018. So last year in October, I went, um, it's coming up on a year almost, which is amazing. Um, still think about it every day. It was an amazing experience. And I know you guys are going to have a blast. Um, it was really, really special. So not only am I coming from this perspective of fundraising and to international but I went on the trip so please feel free if you again if you want to my take um, please feel free to ask about that too so that's me um, let's now talk a little bit about why we fundraise so as you know probably QSO International is a charity, and this is an event that supports our, our charity. And so um, as a charity, we can provide tax receipts, which is great. So any donations of $10 or more will receive a tax receipt. Um, if they give on your, your online fundraising page, they'll automatically get their receipt emailed to them um, as a PDF attachment. Uh, so they'll, that's not, nothing that you have to worry about. It automatically happens and um, is a really great tax benefit for your donors. Um, our funding comes, a uh, bulk of our funding comes from Global Affairs Canada, and they provide us with 90% of what we need to do uh, our work, and we fundraise 10% uh, of that. It's around 1.65 million each year. And because of this agreement, we can really talk about this ratio that we have. We have a nine to one uh, ratio with Global Affairs. And that means for every $1 that gets donated to QSO, the Canadian government will provide nine to us. So that means a $25 contribution becomes $250 and we can really see that multiplying and that's something that I suggest everybody keep on their fundraising page. It is already on your fundraising page so um, you can uh, leave that there or you can enhance it if um, I think when I did my fundraising I um, put the minimum instead of putting $25 first I put 50 because I felt like my network could um, could handle a little bit of a higher amount so I put a $50 contribution becomes 500 and a hundred dollar contribution becomes a thousand and I, I think it's a really great incentive you know if people can see their dollars going even further um, people may be more inclined to give a bigger donation as well so um, that's a, a really great incentive for donors and the funds raised from this event will contribute to the match and it's also what the match really is about is sending volunteers um, to work you know around the world in this case in the Andean region so where um, where we're going for the challenge in Peru we send volunteers around the world each year and it's uh, it's really important that we have the funds to do um, our work and so this event is not only a personal challenge but it's a way for us to fundraise as well. So when we're talking about um, 
QSO International, you may want to share some of this information with your donors that we've been around for um, for almost 60 years, so since 1961, and our whole purpose is to reduce poverty and inequality around the world. Um, we mobilize hundreds of volunteers who have professional skills to work in all areas um, of, uh, of, of the world and on all different types of things. So um, if you would like more detail about that, please feel free to let me know. Um, I'm happy to delve further uh, on CUSO International. But I can tell you that CUSO has been in Peru for a very long time. We have a long history of helping our partners uh, in the Andean region. And really what the funds are supporting are women and girls and youth gaining skills that they need for employment and for economic development and economic independence and really using the Andean way of life. So you can see in that photo the weaving and um, there's a lot around tourism and um, those kinds of things that um, not only strengthen the Andean way of life but also um, provide an economic benefit to those locals. Um, in this case it we went this was our partner visit last year we went to a women's cooperative so it's an ecotourism women's cooperative where they're drawing people out of the city into a more rural area and they're showing people how they live, how they farm, what they eat, um, how they prepare meals, um, how they weave, how they weave these beautiful um, textiles, and they show uh, how they create the colors and um, the just the depth that they're able to get with all of these fabrics. So it's uh, it was a really, really special experience to actually go and see this. And um, what the really what happened here was we had a volunteer who was working with this women's cooperative to help them in their business. So to help them market and bring tourists from the city and to prepare them and to teach them a little bit about English and um, around marketing and what to expect from a North American traveler and things like that so that they could draw those tourists in and they would be prepared to not only host them but share uh, their um, their lifestyle with uh, with the tourists and then as a um, a benefit to them of course they would get paid and would be an economic development sort of situation for those women um, which is really important because their their um, husbands are working in the fields and those kinds of things and they're rearing children but they can also do this uh, type of business um, as a group and can really support each other as a community. So that's a little bit about where the money is going. It's really to send volunteers to help work on these types of projects. Um, again, if you have any questions about our projects or how we um, deploy our volunteers or anything like that, please feel free to ask because I want you to feel comfortable when you're talking with your donors about where the dollars are going. Um, I can tell you that it's going towards sending volunteers to the Andean region to work on projects like this and you're going to get to see a, some, uh, a project as well on your trip. So that's going to be really um, exciting. I think uh, that was a highlight for most people last year. Okay, so what are some of your options? Hang on a second. I'm going to go back just because I have a question. Is the money we raise targeted for the Andean region or is that one example? Well, the funds, um, they all go kind of together, but we're uh, directing them towards Peru and helping specifically in Peru. So um, the messaging that you can give your donors is to help send volunteers to Peru and our work there um, and to helping um, women and girls mostly um, in that economic development. So um, I would say that you can tell people that it's actually going to uh, sending volunteers to Peru. Really good question. Um, thank you for asking that. Um, okay, so what are our options? There's lots of options. Um, there's a Typically, people do a combination of these things, so they can make a personal contribution. And sometimes people decide that they're going, they're not going to do the fundraising side, and they just are comfortable making a, a personal contribution. If that's the case, that's perfectly fine. You can do that, um, and you're you're going to get a tax receipt for it as well, which is a nice bonus um, when it comes time to do your taxes. 
You can also become a monthly donor, which means a set amount comes off of your credit card on a monthly basis. Um, you set the amount and the length of, uh, of time. Like I said, you have until I think the end of January to get most of your fundraising um, sorted. So you could be uh, making a monthly contribution um, up until then. And then people also uh, fundraise. And the fundraising can take a couple of different forms. So it can be um, an online fundraising uh, activity, which I think 99% of people end up doing. Um, and that means using your online fundraising page um, to uh, send out emails and contact people um, your network uh, to go to your fundraising page and make a personal contribution online. We can also host face-to-face -face events and those events can take many forms. Uh, there's lots of different things and I think in this presentation a little bit later on we're going to talk about what some of those things are, um, those face-to-face -face things. So whether it is a barbecue, um, I know we're coming to the end of the summer, but the while the weather is still good, there's lots of opportunities to do uh, interesting things and get people together. Um, and then as we also go into the holiday season, I know there's another really great opportunity uh, for people to, um, to make another push towards their fundraising because people are looking for their end of year tax receipts. If people make a contribution before the end end of 2019, they'll get a 2019 tax receipt. And I think it was you, Amy, who said, um, if somebody wants to get the most benefit, they can actually make a contribution in both 2019 and in 2020, and then they're going to get a tax receipt for both fiscal years, which I think is really smart um, way to pitch it to your uh, potential donors. So those are uh, some of the ways that people can make contributions um, to our organization. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk specifically about the online fundraising page and I think uh, most of you have already set up your page which is wonderful. You've had a chance to probably poke around in there a little bit and have a look uh, and see what, uh, what's happening and what it has to offer. So some of the things that I want to touch on right off the start. So this is the fundraising page. Let me just make sure that we're all, um, everyone can see the page. Okay. And I'm just checking the questions. I don't see any questions right at the moment. Okay. So on this page, there's a couple of things I want to bring your attention to. First off is these tabs across the top. So about the event, um, the itinerary, um, those are a couple of things that um, that you can refer to. So if you want to have a look at the itinerary in a little bit more detail, if you want to know a little bit more about the event, um, which I'm sure you probably know just about everything about it at this point, but it's there for you as reference. Um, and then the fundraising toolkit, this is something that you can use if you're the type of person that wants a step-by-step -step, uh, plan that walks you through how to do your fundraising, this is a good one. So it starts out by drafting a plan, making a personal contribution, finalizing uh, your and personalizing your fundraising page, sharing your page with your network, hosting an event, and thanking your donors. So this um, really does walk you kind of through it. Uh, we're going to go through it in, in a little bit more detail today, but it's there again for you as reference. There's also some frequently asked questions and those questions uh, are uh, about the track and about the fundraising so you can have a look through those and then the contact us section um, I also want to touch on because it can be really good to know the transactional side of things so because we are fundraising um, how do we get the donations in the door that's uh, a, a really good bit of information that you should know. One is online. So again, using that online fundraising page that you've registered for, people clicking that donate now button, that's the way we see most of the fundraising happen. Um, if it's a case that you do host something face to face and you get cash, let's say you get cash um, or you collect up cash. Um, 
Oh, I have another question. When someone visits our page, do they see all the same tabs? Yes, they do. Um, they do see all of the information so they can review it, they can look at it, they can see what you're up to. Um, I've had people refer to the itinerary um, and say, check out what I'll be doing. You know, you can see my itinerary in detail on this page at the top of the page, um, those kinds of things. So it can give your donors a bit more information also about what the track is and, and what you've committed to and what you're, what you're going to do uh, with QSO. So that's a really good question. Um, the So for phoning in, so if you do get cash, you can't add a cash donation to your fundraising page. So what you would have to do in order to pay for that cash donation or for us to get the, uh, the donation, you would call in. So you can call us and um, let Christine or myself know that you want to make a contribution on behalf of someone and that it's going towards your fundraising. You would provide your credit card information. You would hang on to the cash. You would give us the name and the address of the donor. And then we would create a tax receipt for that donor and we would charge your card uh, for it. And then of course you would hang on to the cash and pay your, your credit card with it. That's how we make sure that uh, the donor gets the tax receipt. If you were to go onto your fundraising page and just pay it with your credit card, the tax receipt that gets generated will go to you. So it's tied to the credit card. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that, because um, the donations get generated based on the credit card that gets used. To avoid that, we use uh, the phone and we can charge your credit card and receipt somebody um, who is the donor, somebody other than um, yourself. And then the other option is mail, of course. So if you receive checks or, um, you know, checks made out to QSO International, you can put those in the mail. Again, we'd like their, uh, or we need to have their name and address for the tax receipt. So in order for us to produce a tax receipt, we have to have that name and address. So you can um, send that in and um, we can add that to your page. So if it's a case, even in the case of a phone call, I can add it to your fundraising page for you as well so that your total keeps growing. Okay, so those are the different ways that we can receive uh, donations. Let me now go back to the home page. And on this page, um, I just want to bring attention to the the top fundraisers. So we can see already we have some, some folks that have started their fundraising, which is great. Um, and we can um, click on other people's pages, we can get inspiration from each other, we can um, share what's working and, and, you know, different tactics that you've taken and things like that. So, um, and people also, you can see in that top donor list uh, on the screen there that um, people can choose to either have their name be anonymous or have it show. So that also um, is up to the donor. So there is a lot of flexibility in terms of what people are comfortable with in showing um, both their name and the amount that they've chosen to donate. So um, in that top donors, it doesn't say the amount, um, but on your fundraising page, um, it, uh, it might say that. So um, let's just see here. Uh, let's go to Faith's page for an, as an example. So you can see on this page, um, actually Faith has an anonymous donation and you can see the amount, but you can't see the name. So they've made that decision. So you can choose to, to have it show anonymous with no amount next to it, or you can have a name and an amount um, depending. And so you can also see that there's a donate now button, that green button, that's the one we want everyone to click on. Um, that's going to take them to your uh, donation page where they can make their contribution. This online fundraising page has a lot of capability to, um, to, to make your pitch really, to personalize your message and to really talk to people about why uh, this um, track is important to you and why you've chosen to do it. You can also add photos and videos. Um, you can send out emails from the system um, and you can track your progress. And the system also generates uh, a thank you, uh, not only a thank you email, but it will notify you when someone donates. So you can go in and thank people. So that's another uh, really good tip. Um, to know that you can uh, be notified and keep up with those thank yous as you go along. 
Okay, so um, on your fundraising page, what I can do is I can, um, in my follow-up email, maybe I'll send you an example of what I wrote on my fundraising page when I did my fundraising last year. Um, I think what's really important is for you to talk about your motivation. Um, share a little bit about why it's important to you um, to fundraise. Not only to fundraise for QSO, but to go on this trip and why you've chosen QSO. Um, you've probably considered this. You know, it's not only um, a personal challenge for you, but you also probably want to do something good in the world. And this is a way to do both of those things. So, talking a little bit about that can really um, be interesting for people because, you know, not everyone gets to have this opportunity. And uh, it's, it, People will want to get on board. When they see your enthusiasm and why you've chosen to do it, they're going to get on board with you. So um, sharing a little bit about your motivation and then a little bit about QSO International. And you can see, you know, you want to keep things pretty um, pretty high level. You don't want it to be too long, I guess. Um, each paragraph is only a couple of sentences, I would suggest. Um, and then, of course, you want to have an ask on your page as well. So including an ask is really important. Um, you can see on uh, the page it comes standard. Um, I'm fundraising 4000 to help sustain QSO's vital work. I hope you'll consider making a gift today in support of my campaign. Because we're fundraising, we have to include an ask. I think it's really important to do that. And then right under that, you can see right now for every $1 you donate, and there's that match coming in there uh, right after. So that's, um, again, something that you want to keep on your page. As you do different things, you will get badges. Um, badges will uh, show up on your page as you, you uh, do different activities. And um, you can get all the badges and they'll they'll show there. Um, at the bottom, you'll see there's an about QSO and that's just for people who don't necessarily know who we are. Um, as much as we'd like to be a household name, we're not quite there yet. So we um, want to inform people about who we are and what, uh, what we do. And then there's also a video there and that is really sort of a digital brochure, talks about um, who we are and what we do. You can see on this page that uh, there is a QSO kind of logo there um, in the message and that is the spot where you can put a photo or a video. Now the system only allows you to have one photo or one video. Um, unfortunately, it's just a limitation of the system, but um, you can, I do suggest that you do put in a photo uh, at least. If it's a, a photo of yourself, that would be wonderful because it gives people confidence to know that they're on the right page, that they're seeing your face and that they're making their contribution to your fundraising campaign. What I find has worked really well is when people do a video. And again, after this, I'm going to send you all a few examples of some fundraising videos that have been done. And I know some people cringe when I say video, but um, even I did a video. Maybe I'll share you with you my video. It's really goofy and lame, but it worked. You know, people aren't used to seeing me on video. And if you're the same way, um, I think people will get a kick out of it. I got a lot of feedback from people saying, oh, I saw your video. It's good. You know, that kind of thing. And um, yeah, I think it's it's really engaging and it's something you can also share on social media as well. It doesn't have to be long. I would say the shorter, the better. It can be done on a cell phone. Um, have a friend hold the phone or prop it up on some books and just hop on there just to say, thanks for coming to my fundraising page. I really appreciate um, your support. I'm really looking forward to my trip to Machu Picchu and the hike that I'm going on. And I'm doing it for QSO International. And I hope you'll also help support this really great organization that I believe in. Um, you know, thank you for, for clicking the donate now button, helping uh, me reach my fundraising goal. And that's really all that you have to do. If you'd like a script, if you'd like to have some key points to kind of touch on in a video, I'm happy to put that together. Um, like I said, I'll send you some, some videos from volunteers who are going on their placement, who are doing their fundraising. And uh, I have some really good videos talking about, you know, their excitement for going and their desire to want to help uh, QSO International. So um, that will give you kind of a sense of it. You don't have to be super tech savvy. Like I said, I wouldn't edit it. I would just do like a one take kind of thing and um, see see how you do. I think when I did it, I did uh, three takes and I just took the best one and that was it. Um, so 
um, people get really hung up on their message. Um, we know that when you personalize your message, you get more response, you get a better response. So you'll get a higher donation amount if you personalize your message instead of just leaving it with a standard message. Um, and so people start to get really detailed about what they're putting in their message. And I can tell you from experience that sincerity goes so much further than a perfectly written message. Um, your excitement, your enthusiasm um, is going to come through and really make things interesting, uh, make it uh, interesting and desirable for your donors to want to contribute and to support you um, and to support a great cause. So um, consider that as you're writing your message. And if you would like some help with it, please let me know. I'm happy to review your message and I can punch it up and make suggestions um, and that kind of thing as well. Certainly you don't have to do that, but if that's something that you'd like to do, I'm happy uh, to do that. Um, what people have sometimes done on their page is that they've given a bit of an incentive for donating at a certain level. So that's something that you can also do. So we've seen um, people do things like, for a gift of $50, I'll send you a postcard uh, when I'm in Cusco, Peru which is kind of interesting. It kind of sets uh, sets people up to, to do that. Now you're committing to doing something, so keep that in mind as well. And again, this is really optional, but um, just to throw out some ideas of what people have done. Um, people have done things like, I'll bring home a locally crafted gift uh, from a local market. Again, that's something that can be relatively inexpensive, you know, whether it's a coin purse or, you know, there's tons and tons of things that you can do that support the local economy um, and things that you don't have to buy from big markets. Like where you're going to be walking, um, it's going to be rural and there will be people who are living out there who are making things that you can support those local people, which I think is really special. So you can say something like a gift of $25, I'll bring you home a locally crafted gift from, from uh, my trip. Um, so those kinds of things can, can add a, a bit of incentive. I did also have somebody do um, like a different type of challenge. Um, I know you're already going on a challenge, but you could do, um, uh, you know, you could do something. We had, we had one person who did uh, push-ups. So for every $25 donation, I'll do 25, uh, I think he did 100 push-ups. And so he just kept getting all of these $25 donations. We had to do all of these push-ups and he ended up taking a video. He had a buddy video of him, of him fulfilling his commitment, doing his push-ups. Um, and then he shared that around with all of his network and all those people who donated. And it ended up being really interesting because he, of course all of his buddies wanted to punish him and, and it was really exciting for his fundraising. Now you guys are already going on a challenge that is going to be um, like doing a hundred push-ups. So, um, consider that using that angle. Um, and I think also um, there's lots of different ways that you can um, you can uh, couch your ask as well. So we've had some people in years past use their birthday as well. So we did have somebody who was having a milestone birthday, um, uh, a 50, uh, 50th birthday. And so you could say, you know, give 50 on my 50th and I'm going to go do this really cool challenge and we're going to support a really great cause. So there's different ways that you can, um, you can do that as well. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log in and I'm going to show you what uh, the back end of the system looks like. And I'm just going to um, log in here. Okay, and my password. <laughs> Isn't gonna work. Okay. Let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, hang on. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch to our volunteer pages because the platform is exactly the same and so I can show you what it looks like. Ah, oh, it's not going to work for me. Let 
me try, bear with me now. My many passwords and those kinds of things can be. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have experienced any of these challenges, but I feel like the page has been acting up for me a little bit. Um, and I've had, I've struggled a little bit to log into my page. I am working with our development team in order to rectify this. Have you guys had a, a weird experience with logging in? Oh, hang on. I know what I'm doing wrong. It wouldn't let me log in this morning, kept giving me an error message. Too many redirects. Yes, Amy, I got the same thing. Um, too many redirects. And so know that I am on the case. Um, I have asked them to, uh, to solve this error um, because I'm having the exact same one. I'm just going to try one more time. Uh, with this and see. Okay, so it's not going to work for me. Uh, too many login attempts. Okay, so this isn't going to work out the very best for me. Okay, so what we can do is if you want to follow along, um, If you want to um, know any information about your fundraising page itself, please let me know. I can walk you through um, how to set up your page um, and I'm happy to do that. Um, and you know, if you're having any issues, but know that I'm having that redirect issue as well. Um, so when you go, to, when you first go to your page, um, there is uh, a list of prompts for you. So it, it is very much like um, a step-by-step -step kind of situation. So you can um, first um, customize your message. And so you can go to the tab that says personal page. On that personal page, I can do this uh, from memory. So if you do want to follow along um, in on your machine, um, you can do that. Um, you can go to your fundraising page and um, let me know if I'm, if you can follow along with me. Um, but when you when you do log into your page, um, you want to go, the first thing you want to do is go to the tab called personal page. On that page is um, the very first thing that you come to is the URL shortening tool. Now this is really uh, important because this is the link that you want to share with your network. So this link is um, is customizable. So what you can do is you can click on shorten the link and it, a little field will come up at the end of the link. And in that you can put just about anything. You can put your name, you can put your last name, you can put your first name, you can put whatever you want um, just to make it a little bit shorter uh, rather than the link that goes all the way across your screen um, at the top of your, um, your navigation there. So once you select what you're going to put as your little extension, you want to click save and um, you want to keep your page public. Um, I think in that same area, you can um, decide if you want your page public or private. You certainly want it public. You want people to be able to search for it and find it and make their donation. So it, when you click save, it will provide you with a shorter link um, just in that same area. That's the link that you want people to go to. So you want to copy and paste that link and put it everywhere, right? So you want to put that in your email, you want to put it in your social media, you want to drive traffic to your fundraising page using that link. Um, once you have your link sorted, the next uh, step is to change your title. And where it says on my screen now, it says, welcome to my personal page. You can customize that. And I suggest you do put your name somewhere in that title. If you just put, I'm fundraising for Peru, it doesn't give people the sense of, of who is doing the fundraising, um, even though you may sign it at the bottom from, from your name. Having it right up front is, is probably really great. So you could put Amy's fundraising page or Amy's fundraising for, Machu P for, for the QSO challenge or um, something like that, but something that indicates that it's your fundraising page. 
below that, you're going to see a field where you can fill in your um, information as far as the message that you want to create. Like I said, I'll share with you my message. You certainly just take inspiration from it. It doesn't have to be like that exactly. But um, I talked about why it was important to me. I had made sure I had my ask in there. I um, talked about who QSO International was in case people didn't know uh, who they were, uh, who we are. and um, and then uh, I think thank people at the end. I also had a section that said, I'm going to be posting on Instagram while I'm away. Follow me here if you want to uh, to hear more about uh, about my my um, preparation and about uh, when I'm on the trip itself. So I made a commitment to post on social media as I went along. Now, internet can be really sketchy and I didn't always have um, on the nights that you're camping, likelihood is you're not going to have internet um, at in Cusco so when you're in the city you will have Wi-Fi um, and when you complete the trek and you're back in Aguas Calientes uh, once you've um, come through the Sun Gate and you've seen Machu Picchu that night you do also have internet at that time so you can expect to to post. Um, now there were people who bought um, packages so that they could post and they would have internet uh, data plans and that kind of thing while they were uh, with it while they were trekking. So I just put that in there as an, uh, an added bonus but uh, another question I had this week that was really good was um, why can't I hyperlink something? Well that's because we want people to click on the donate now button so you can put a link like I put a link to my Instagram. It wasn't an actual link it was just the address. Um, and so people can copy and paste it into their browser. Um, it's not a link because we don't want to lose people. You know, we don't want them to go to my Instagram and then never come back and actually make their contribution. We want them to stay on this page, read the message, and click the Donate Now button. So um, that's a little bit about your message. You want to save your message as you're writing it. Again, don't get hung up too much on like making it perfect. Um, you can always change it, you can always edit it, it doesn't have to be static, um, and you know you can adjust or do updates as you go along. You also, so then on the um, on the right hand side of the, the screen in a panel there you're going to see add a photo or video. When you click on that it gives you the option to upload a photo from your computer and so you could just add a photo. There are some photo restrictions in terms of size and number of pixels and things like that. If your photo is not loading properly just send it to me I can resize it and add it for you no problem at all. Um, again for your video if you are going to do a video you can put it on um, uh, on YouTube and you can just link it from YouTube and then it automatically brings it onto your fundraising page for you. Uh, that's uh, what I did with my page. So I'll send you a link to my YouTube um, video, which again is really embarrassing, but it, it worked. I mean, it really did work. So, and I practice what I preach, you know, I tell people to do a video because it is dynamic and, and engaging. So um, know that that, that will work um, for you too. Now I want to talk about email. So those are all the things in setting up your page itself. Once you have your page set up, now you want to spread the word, right? You want to tell people about it. You can do that through email. And what I suggest you do is actually use your personal email. This system does have an email built into it, but um, the email ends up coming from a different address that then is your own. So if you're used to using Hotmail or Gmail or whatever, I suggest that you continue to use that and send your emails through your personal account. First of all, people are expecting to get emails from you at that address and your network may get um, emails in their junk mail, like it may not, the deliverability may not be as good um, if you use the system. Not to say that it's not a great system, it is a really good system, but we have seen uh, people say that their emails didn't go to inboxes as much as they would have liked. So in order to avoid that, I would draft a short email, now not your entire message that you're putting on your fundraising page, something shorter, um, teasing people to go over to your fundraising page, um, including the link in the email, um, thanking people for going and visiting your page and reading more about it and sharing that with the various groups that you're involved with. So you're going to think about who are those uh, those groups. So friends and family come, come first probably. They probably already have an idea about what you're up to. 
um, things like coworkers, colleagues, um, even companies that you may work for may help support. Um, people in your, uh, your circle, so things like clubs or groups that you belong to. If you belong to, uh, I belong to a, um, a volleyball team, for example, that was a natural place for me to go, um, you know, let them know that I wasn't gonna be around, I was gonna miss volleyball for uh, two weeks and I was gonna be uh, off doing this really cool thing and then they all con contributed and that kind of thing. But if you have a book club or a group that gets together to play games or, um, who knows what, maybe it's a religious group, maybe it's your gym that you go to, um, whatever it might be, consider those people who are in your orbit as people who may be interested in contributing. Um, try not to count people out before you've asked them. I think that's another really big tip is that people think, oh, that person's never gonna donate. And therefore you don't end up asking them. And I can tell you that you'll be surprised by the people who donate. Um, you'll also be surprised by the people who don't donate. Um, but, you know, people will find out about this and be interested and want to help. So um, try not to, to prejudge who's going to give and who won't. Just put simply put it out there. See what happens. Um, you're going to put it out as an opportunity to support a really great charity, um, something that you believe in and want to support. And you're checking off a bucket list item at the same time. Um, I think that that's a really good, um, a really good pitch. So um, that's the idea of sending the email. What I did for mine is that I, um, I sent a series of three emails. I sent one email to uh, launch, really, and that was really to talk about what I'm doing, where I'm going, why I'm doing it. My second email was my preparation. So I'm training, I'm hiking, I got my boots, I'm excited for this, I've learned about that, I'm um, preparing for these different things, I've bought this poncho in case it rains, you know, all those different things. Um, kind of bringing your network along on this journey that you're going on, that you're preparing for for the next, what is it, six months? Uh, you know, you're, it's, it's um, something that you're working towards. And then my last email was, and you can, that middle email, you can probably spread that out across two or three emails that you could do. Um, I had a limited amount of time, so I just used the, the three email option. The last email was, thanks everyone who contributed to my campaign. I couldn't have done it without you. If you are still considering making a gift and you haven't done it yet, there's still time. Go to my page, make a contribution. There's no... Um, you know, make a, make a, a contribution and, and there's still time to make a difference. Sending a reminder email, like sending a couple of emails is a good idea. Not everyone's gonna give in the first email. Um, what I did also was I posted on social media in between all of those emails to keep the momentum going. So like I said, those kind of preparation kind of emails are things, uh, the training emails, things like that, things that I've looked up, things that I've learned, um, those kinds of things are, um, I did a thing about what's what's the difference between a llama and an alpaca, you know, kind of putting things out on social media about that, um, getting people to respond and, and engage uh, with that. Um, and that can just keep the momentum going. And of course, you're including the link in your social media as well, so people can go to your page and read more. I think Facebook and, and Instagram and Twitter and things are really great ways to reach a lot of people. Um, you can reach a great number of people by doing that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch back over to my presentation and let's talk about offline ideas to fundraise. I have a whole list of things here um, that people have done to achieve their fundraising goal. And I've already heard from some people who have registered already um, of different events and things that they want to do. Um, I know I had one group that want to do a golf tournament, for example. So if you have a network who's into golf, why not um, engage them in a, in a fundraising opportunity? Tournaments, walks, runs, challenge events. Um, one person did an obstacle course in their backyard. You know, the weather's still relatively good. You could do some some fun things. Um, you know, simple things like having a barbecue, I think, is another great one. Um, raffles and draws, I want you to be aware of licenses in the various provinces that you're in. Uh, so those can be good, but you do have to follow the rules on those. Trivia nights, game nights, comedy nights. Um, adding in a silent auction to something that you're already doing. Um, if you're gonna, um, you know, there's so many different ways that it could go. Uh, 
hosting a farewell party. So having a, like I said, having a barbecue or a tea party or a movie screening or um, some kind of tasting event. If you're into wine or you're into cookies, who knows, whatever it might be, have people over and have an event around it. What I'm suggesting is not hosting a gala event where you're inviting the entire city. Um, do things that you, that are manageable, that are um, within reach of your, uh, your the level of time that you have to commit to it and the network that you want to engage by it. Um, having a sales, bake sales, yard sales, clothing, plant, book sales can be really good. Um, selling your skills or sharing your knowledge. We had people host yoga events. Um, you know, they're a yoga teacher and then the proceeds from particular classes went towards their fundraising. Or um, if you have, um, I had somebody who was an ESL teacher and she took on ESL clients, um, English language uh, students on the side and the proceeds from, you know, those, um, those um, lessons went towards her fundraising. So think about those skills or knowledge that you have that you can share with people and you can uh, monetize that for a donation. Make something. If you're crafty or you're into cooking, you know, if people love your food, maybe you want to make a, a digital cookbook and you want to say for $50, every, whoever makes a contribution of $50, I'll put together my digital cookbook and I'll send it to you and, and you can have that. You know, if you have a secret recipe or you have something interesting or maybe you're into woodworking or you're into sewing or knitting or who knows what, um, you can leverage that for uh, a donation as well. Celebrating your birthday, I gave that example already. Um, we all have birthdays coming up and so using a birthday as a, a way to celebrate and a way to say, hey, you know what, for my birthday this year, I'd love it if you gave a donation to QSO International. Um, that certainly works and it works very, very well. And then the last one is really goofy, eat, shave, grow, or do something fun for a donation. So we've had people eat a ghost pepper, we've had people um, uh, shave their beard, or cut their hair, or grow their hair, grow a mustache, do all kinds of different things. Um, you can do that for, uh, for a contribution, but be safe, uh, don't do anything dangerous. Um, so if there's any other ideas that I haven't listed there, let me know. Um, do you guys have uh, a sense of, of what you might do in terms of face-to-face -face fundraising? Do you think that you'll uh, um, have a mainly online campaign? Um, let me know if you have any other, if you have any questions or anything about that, um, please let me know. And then I know I'm coming to the end of this, but I do have a couple of more slides that I want to share with you in terms of planning really important to think about how much time you have and what you might be able to accomplish. So what are three activities that you think you can do? Maybe it's posting a video, maybe it's throwing an event of some kind, having a trivia night, and then of course certainly um, sending a reminder email. Now you want to do it certainly before a week before you depart. You want to send it um, sooner than later because I think your deadline is um, end of January. So you want to send it, uh, if you're still fundraising at that point, again, you can use that kind of language of thank you for all of those who have given. If you haven't found the time to give yet, there is still time to do so. And then, of course, think about those people who are around you. Do you have somebody that has a big following on Facebook? Maybe they're willing to post it on your behalf. Maybe you have a connection to some place that's going to open a door for you. We've had people do um, things like there was a, a smoothie food truck. So it was a food truck that sold smoothies and the proceeds from this particular smoothie went towards this volunteer's fundraising. So it was a way to leverage a network that she had already and of course that business was more than happy to be involved and to support uh, a charity and um, the proceeds from that smoothie went towards her fundraising. And then think about your friends and family. If you are going to host an event, have someone help set up or take photos or, um, you know, help bring a dish, uh, you know, cook some food or, or something like that. Think about those people who are around you who can help. And then here are some quick tips. So start early. The earlier, the better. I think it's great that you guys have your fundraising page set up um, already. That is wonderful. And uh, I am going to work the kinks out so that they actually functions properly. Um, so yes, leave that with me. Um, but start early. So as much as you can plan and think about what you might do with your fundraising in advance, uh, definitely do that. Um, 
also set milestones. So not only setting your goal, but in terms of timelines, when do you want to accomplish the various things that you want to do? Donating to yourself can be really great too because it kind of sets the stage. What I did is I made a contribution on my page of $100 when I first started my fundraising. And um, I, what I saw from that is that the next five donations that came in were all at that same level. And so in some ways it can kind of set the tone. You're also leading by example. You've already given to something that you've, you're asking other people to do, which I think is, is also important. So donating to yourself can be great. I think also another really good message that you can give to your donors is I'm paying for my trip. So this donation does not pay for me to go to Peru. I'm paying for me to go to Peru. So 100% of the proceeds that get donated here on my page go to CUSO International to help international development work in Peru. So that's another one that, that somebody had on their page last year that I think worked really well. Um, that it's, you know, you can let people know that it's self-funded and you're doing this to help a charity, um, which can be really a uh, good incentive. Uh, tell your story. So let people know why you're doing this. Keep it short and simple, but um, tailor your message. So the emails that you might send to your friends and family might be very different from an email that you may send to a local business, for example, or to your employer. Um, so you can really tailor your message. You can have your fundraising page be quite um, general and all-encompassing, and then you can tailor those messages in your emails to the various groups that you're reaching out to. Um, and people give to people. So really tell your story about why it's unique to you. And uh, that will really, really help engage people. And again, we don't convince people about, um, about donating to QSO. Honestly, we want to put out the opportunity to say, hey, this is an organization that does really good work. I'm really interested in it and I'm, I'm supporting them and I hope you'll do the same thing. And sometimes people won't give and that's okay. You know, that's, that's their prerogative. They can choose whichever charities they want to donate to. Um, but we just want to put out that uh, idea and that opportunity to people. Talk about how the money will be used. So you can talk about QSO International, that we work with partner organizations in developing countries, that we send volunteers that have specific skills to work with our partners, that we have this great match that's going on, this nine to one match. Um, all of those things can be great incentives. Ask, we know the number one reason why people give is because they were asked. Literally my, um, dental hygienist gave a donation because I was talking about what I was doing and she made a contribution, which of course I didn't expect, but we got talking about it. And I said, and I'm fundraising for, for QSO. It's an, I'm doing it for, for charity. And she said, oh, well, I'll support that. And there, there it was, I was receiving a donation like from somebody I didn't even think that I would. And I think that you're going to find the same thing. You know, you'll, you'll find those moments. The more you talk about it, the easier it becomes to, um, talk about not only what you're doing, but about the about QSO and that kind of thing. Making it easy for people to donate, I think, is is great. And so having the link in your email signature or in your social media uh, bio or those kinds of things um, can make it really easy. And then, of course, enlist others. So your family, your friends, your coworkers, um, have them pitch in and, and uh, ask them to help. They're going to want to help you because you're doing something really cool and um, they will certainly want to, to help pitch in. And then be creative. Anytime you can add a creativity onto this uh, fundraising endeavor, please feel free to do that. Um, and there's lots of different ways that you can do interesting events and things. Um, and then of course say thank you. So you'll get notified. You're going to send people either a um, an email or uh, we've had people do a video message or a phone call or a handwritten note or whatever it might be. Um, thank people genuinely for their support because we really do uh, appreciate it. It does mean so much to our organization um, in our ability to continue to do what we do. Um, Social media is also uh, important and a great way to, to spread the word. So if you are going to post on social media, please tag us in. Share um, not only your fundraising experience, but your, uh, your challenge experience while you're there. If you'd like to do that, we'd love to hear from you um, and follow you along in, in this. So tag us in. Here's an example of somebody who... Um, 
who used social media. She did a marathon and she did a little thank you over social media. And um, just from the marathon that she raised, uh, that she ran, she raised $835. And then that post actually raised even more money. So just by thanking people, even shouting people out. So like if you do get somebody who's on social media, who makes a contribution to you, you can say, hey, thanks so-and-so, you made a contribution to my, um, to my fundraising. It really means a lot to me. And then you can say, still have, you know, 50% of the way to go. You can make a contribution and then put a um, put the link to your page there. There's lots of ways to share uh, the info on social media. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the hour. And I want to know if there's any questions from you. Um, have I covered everything? Are there things still outstanding that you'd like to discuss? I can see, Christine, you have your hand up. I can unmute you. Um, how about I do that? Um, hi. <laughs> hi. How are you? I good. I can't. I I can't. Um, as I couldn't type in for some reason. Oh. That's why I've been very quiet. Yeah. But um, I I think I'll need assistance and to make sure that my page is set up correctly because I am not technically inclined. Okay. <laughs> so I want to make sure that I do everything properly. Sure. So I don't know if we could set up a time maybe this week. Totally. Uh, to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. We can. Um, have you gone through the registration process already? I did, but it kind of I, I was stuck at certain places and I didn't want to okay. do something in case I just didn't do it right. Right. I think walking me through. I, I'm going to put my summary together. I have the photo. I just need somebody to just, OK, drop this in, drop that in. Yeah. And um, I'd love to, you know, if you can send the, the emails that you were talking about so we can kind of piggyback and just not start from scratch. Yeah. On your like launch email and your preparation email and, you know, the thinking of the email, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Again, it was really, um, <laughs> it, I was very well supported along the way. And so my emails were very lighthearted and they were mainly to to my nearest and dearest and the, the closest people to me. So take that um, context along with it. But I will certainly send that to you because I think they can be helpful. I think you just seeing what someone else did, I think can can also, yeah, it can um, help give inspiration and you can put your own spin on it. So yeah, I'll definitely send those to you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Okay, Amy has another question. I've drafted my page. I'd appreciate if you would take a look and provide me more. Yeah, I can provide feedback. Absolutely. Um, if you want me to uh, to do that, I'm happy to, to have a look at it. Um, we're using a different platform this year uh, for our fundraising pages. So I don't actually have the pages from last year, um, unfortunately, from the people who had actually done their fundraising last year. But I do have some really good examples. Um, and I know the different elements that, that will make a, a good fundraising page. And, and keep in mind that everyone's fundraising is going to be a little bit different, right? Depending on which um, networks you end up going to and how you might want to uh, to approach it. So um, I'm happy to uh, to discuss that. Or if if at all along the way you're thinking, oh, I don't know, like I've kind of run out of ideas, or I'm not really sure what to do next, just be in touch. Like like I said, I'm here to help you. Um, I want you to be successful. Um, so please feel free to. Um, to, to do that and I can um, I can help out where possible awesome yeah okay any other questions or anything uh, as we're winding down here not from my end okay great well I want to thank everyone thank you all for joining me um, Thanks. I hope this gave you a little bit more insight into some ideas or some things that you can do to uh, to achieve your your fundraising goal. And um, know that we're so grateful and we are so excited. I am so excited for you guys because I've been on this trip and I know how awesome it is. Um, so I know you guys are going to have an amazing time. Um, so uh, all the best with your fundraising. We are all going to be in touch a whole lot more um, in the the coming. Uh, weeks and months as we lead up to the challenge. So um, I look forward to being in touch with you and um, and all the best in your fundraising. Thanks everyone for joining me today. <laughs>